So it is April 18th, and I just got out of Missing Link, Leica's latest movie. I'm a huge fan of Leica. Coraline is one of my favorite movies of all time. And Box Trolls, I think, is their second best movie. Paranorman and Cubo are, in my opinion, two weaker movies that they've made, but they are still well above average compared to what other animation studios put out. All of their movies have a very dark tone to them. Coraline's a borderline horror movie. Of course, Paranorman is also ghost-themed. Box Trolls is, like, gothic and creepy. Cubo and the Two Strings has a lot of samurai themes to it and is definitely darker in color. But Missing Link is a bright, colorful family movie for all ages. However, I think many longtime Leica fans might be turned away from the movie because of that. And I do want to address that this movie is making almost no money at the box office. It was a nearly empty theater. And all around, this movie just was not advertised well. They used, uh, the, they used not the main character, but definitely the mascot character of the whole movie, Mr. Link, or he renames himself Susan later on. Uh, he's not technically the main character, but you definitely will remember him more than the actual main character, Lionel. Um, Lionel's a very forgettable character in my opinion, I probably won't remember him uh, a week later after seeing this movie, but I will I will remember Mr. Link, who is a very good character with uh, Zach Galakinathic's performance behind his voice. It's a, it's a really good character, but I do think his character design is a little off-putting. I think that's why this movie didn't do well, is because he's just not an attractive character design. He's big round doofy monkey like he's supposed to be a sasquatch but i remember thinking he looked ugly on the posters and i hate saying that because he's such a sweet lovable character by the end of this movie he's it's just a really good character all around and i really didn't care about this movie until i knew leica made it i never got a trailer for this movie and like i said all of the posters were of mr link and there was just no indication that this movie was anything other than uh, another CG movie put out by a third-party studio. Now, I hear you typing already. I know you're going to get mad at me for saying CG. I know darn well that this movie is a stop-motion feature and a beautiful one, but I really did not know that until I realized it was made by Leica. The posters all heavily implied that it was a CG movie. It is my fault for missing the Leica icon but again they made that very small they never said from the creators of box trolls from the creators of Coraline from the creators of Kubo they did not advertise the talented studio behind this movie and I think that's why it's doing so poorly at the box office right now but enough about that this movie is a very good adventure family movie it goes everywhere one moment it's like a fancy English movie from like a you know like a historical British setting and then it goes to America and it's a western and then it's in the forest, and then it's off to India, and it's like a big travel movie, and the best scene in this movie is when they're on a cruise ship to India. There's a chase scene, there's a fight scene with one of the main bad guys as henchmen who hunts down the main characters throughout the movie. Well, on the cruise ship, the henchman, I forget his name, the, the bounty hunter hired in this movie is chasing after the main characters, and... What's really fun about this scene is that the ship will tilt with the waves of the ocean. One moment it's, you know, perfectly balanced, everything's fine, and then it goes uphill on a wave, and they all the characters go flying towards the back of the ship, and then the ship tilts on the at top of the wave, and then, and then they're running on the walls, and, and that affects, like, the gravity of uh, all the objects in the room, and it's really fun. I think that was the most uh, high octane part of the movie it gave a sense of urgency all of the other action scenes in this movie were very toned down a lot of the characters didn't move much they were standing around a lot during the action scenes and they all take place in like one spot which i thought was kind of weird it wasn't poorly done it was still exciting it was very good it's just like the action scenes in this movie didn't move much aside from the chase scene on the boat which was which was uh, the best part this is a very visually beautiful movie with a lot of variety. It has darker locations and, like I said, more beautiful locations. Like when it goes to India, there's the forest, there's the ice mountains when they finally go to this on top of this mountain for uh, a reason I don't want to spoil. This movie is well above average. This movie is very good, but all in all, it is kind of a standard adventure 
family movie. If you're into this type of movie and you're into beautiful stop motion animation, you get your money's worth out of your ticket. However, it just it's not like Coraline where it sends you home reconsidering everything you've ever thought about animation. It just is a good adventure film. It doesn't it doesn't blow you it didn't blow me away, but I still really, really enjoy my time in my seat. The humor in this movie is very cute. There's you know, like there's puns, there's a lot of visual gags with um with Link being much stronger than everyone else. I thought that was very funny. He's very clumsy. There's a lot of the you know, like clumsy humor in this. And like Link's attitude, like, you know, he's not like the sharpest tool in the shed, but that's why he's really charming. Like one joke I thought was kind of funny was he sends someone flying through a window in a bar fight scene and he says, ooh, that's gonna leave an awful draft. Like that's just kind of the sense of humor this movie's going for is uh, the awkward mascot type of thing. I really don't know what to compare it to, but once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I recommend, I do recommend seeing Missing Link. It's one of the better things out right now. I know everyone's saving their money for Shazam or Endgame this month, but I do recommend it, especially if you're a fan of animation, you're a fan of stop motion like I am. If you're looking for something a little bit brighter in tone than all the stuff out right now, like there's Hellboy and Shazam, which are visually darker movies. You want to say something more colorful, Missing Link is well worth the ticket price. You should support this movie and go see it uh, because it's not making a lot of money. If it doesn't make much more money, I don't know what Leiko will do in the future. I'm not sure if this movie was made for a lower budget because of Cubo and the two strings bombing at the box office. But if this movie doesn't at least break even, I'm not even sure if we'll get another Leiko movie ever. So I hope it makes money. If not at the theaters, hopefully on Blu-ray and on Netflix sometime eventually. I'm giving Missing Link an 8.5 out of 10. Like I said, a very, very, very good animated movie, but it doesn't shatter the Earth's core. It doesn't blow your mind away. It doesn't reinvent the wheel. It's just a really well-made, well-put-together adventure movie, and there's nothing wrong with that. Go see it. Take a little sibling. Take your kid if you have one. Find someone who would enjoy this type of thing and make sure it makes at least some money at the box office. I hope eventually they have enough money to make another movie because I like Leica a lot, although the five movies they've left us with is pretty satisfying, but I just I don't want them to stop either. They're like the Studio Ghibli of stop motion. Like They never make sequels, but they never... They never make anything bad either. I do want to say that um, as far as these reviews goes, I don't I don't do them very often, and I do want to do them more often. I uh, I meant to do reviews of Alita: Battle Angel and Hellboy. Those never made it because I'm very awkward recording these. I it takes me forever to actually get a take that I'm comfortable with editing, and I've decided to change how I do these reviews. I started off doing reviews of. Uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly and uh, a very different movie at Eternity's Gate which are all niche movies that appeal to a niche audience and I've decided to make this more for niche movies I'm not going to bother reviewing bigger movies that everyone's going to see that everyone's going to have an opinion on I'm going to save these reviews for Stuff like Fathom Events and stuff like movies that aren't as well known. So that way I can get my opinion out on these movies that are, you know, a little less, a, a little less big. There are not as many people are talking about the movies I'm going to review here. Like I plan on reviewing Akko's in next. And I'm going to, I'm just going to keep it to these lesser known niche movies. So that way I'm not oversaturating uh, my channel with reviews of big movies that there's a billion other reviews of. I'll just keep it to these smaller, lesser known movies. I think I'll be happy with that. That's it. Go see Missing Link so Leica can still make another movie. Uh, thanks for listening. See ya.